Hi, this is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. Thank you for joining me. I just want to give you a little bit of update on my channel as well as what's going on in Cafe Watercolor. So I started this YouTube channel about a year ago and since then I've been uploading one painting video per month. And to my surprise and thanks to the viewer like you, I reached 6500 subscribers this month. Just so amazing and humbling knowing that people are interested in what I'm putting out and people like to see me paint or just interested in watercolor in general. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And it's also at this point that I realized that I need more content for my channel and I need to update it a little bit more frequently than once per month. The reason I upload one video per month is because they take a lot of time to do. And I need to condense those time down to 25 to 30 minutes of videos. And on top of that, I need to record voiceover and then color correction, edit them, render them out, export them, upload them onto YouTube. So that takes a lot of time. But I do want to update you with more video than once per month. So this is where this idea of Quickie came in. Quickie basically is the same thing as the painting demo, but instead of 25 to 30 minutes, it's about five to seven minutes and it's all sped up. And instead of diving deep into every single process that I did for that painting, I was just focusing on one specific topic to cover on. I've been getting a lot of questions from emails and from my website talking about specific things such as mixing color, how to avoid muddy colors, how to paint loose, which is a huge one. And I do want to answer one way or another through the video form. So Quickie will be a nice way to do a little bit of Q&A while you're watching me paint and also give you some update and news of what happened here. So all that being said, let's dive into my very first Quickie video. Enjoy. Right, so this painting was painted about a year ago. This is Cypress Point Golf Club. And this is the 16th hole of that golf course. So as you can see in the final painting, the golfers actually need to hit the ball and the ball has to land on the green across the ocean. So this is very interesting and a very famous place for the golfers. Now I'm not a golf player, I don't really know how to play the golf and I don't really know the rule, but golf course is very very beautiful subject to paint and it's just amazing to me how they always able to keep the grass green and cut it at the exact length. So now back to the painting, I actually did quite a bit of drawing in this painting. A very huge thing about this painting is to be able to get the shape of the rock down, keep the wash and the color nice and clean. So this is one of the few times that I actually use a masking tape to assist me because the horizon is very clear because it's where the ocean ends. So I have to make it very straight and clean. And I start off with the background, which is the sky. What I did is I just wet the sky with clean water and I come back in with cobalt blue and lizard and crimson and, and basically just start to put in some clouds. These have to be done while the paint is still really wet. You don't want to wait for it to dry and start to keep digging into it. And keep in mind those are the backgrounds. So while you do want to put in some effort into them, don't overinvest in them. And once you are at a good place, just leave it be and wait for it to dry. And now I started with the first wash of the green and notice the brush I use. I'm not using a tiny little brush just because there's a lot of detail in that green. I actually use a brush that's a little bit too big. So that has to force me not to get into all the tiny little details and instead focusing on the big shape. Using a bigger brush also has the advantage because it holds more water and paint. So it's easier for you to come up with a clean wash. I don't own a tube of green, I like to mix my own green. So the closest green I got is cobalt turquoise. So cobalt turquoise mixed with yellow ochre or cadmium yellow or cadmium orange, burnt sienna. You get a good variety of greens here. So what I'm doing right now in the first wash is that I establish some green and I paint around the sand areas and the highlight. And while the paint is still wet, I come back in and drop in some different variation of greens. Some of them are a little bit warmer, 
some of them are a little bit cooler, but you have to done while the paint is still quite wet. A lot of people want to keep dig back into it when the watch is almost dry. And that is the stage that you don't want to do that because when the watch is almost dry and you put some wet paint on it, it will start to have very messy edges because the water will sip in. So while the watch is still very wet, when you just put down, maybe within 20 to 30 seconds, you can drop in some color with the tip of your brush. Like don't paint some heavy stroke on it, but just lightly putting some pigment into it. And you got some nice variations of colors within one clean wash. So put a tape back in and paint the waterline so it's nice and clean. And I wait till that first wash is dry and I come back in with some darker values of rock and I just paint those in. After doing so, you can immediately tell the form is turning and you can start to see the solid structure of the land and the rocks. Now I'm painting the ocean again with a bigger brush and very important to know that you have to done this in one clean wash. And I purposefully skip around and leave some dry brush edges and leave some white. These will acting as the sea foam and the wave crashing onto the rock. So the challenge of this part is that there is some complicated shape that I need to paint around and to leave some white. And I have to done that in a limited time frame. And I just add some darker blue while the paint is still wet. And it becomes this soft shape that feels like deeper water and waves. and the green in the foreground. You'll notice that the only place that I'm being a little bit more careful is the edge of that land, so I don't paint into the ocean, and I carefully paint around the golf ball. And the rest of it is just a very quick and clean wash down to the bottom. I'm painting a golf course, so the painting should reflect that the golf course is clean and nice, and you can hear the sound of the ocean wave. You can feel the vast feeling of the scenery and very enjoyable to be there. Go back in and add another layer of dark on the rock. And notice that again, this is one single wash. One of the things that I really want you to keep in mind is that every single layer you want to do, do it in one wash and do it cleanly. And keep your layer between two and three. For some of the lighter layer, you only really just need one. The more layer you put on in watercolor, the more dirty and muddy it's going to look. So a lot of time, it might not be the color that you're mixing, but rather you're putting too many layers on the painting and it start to look muddy. When you stack up so many transparent layer, it become noise, it become mud. So the grass on the green in the distance is only one layer and the grass and the foreground is two. So re wet part of the water and adding some additional wave onto it. And that's it. So thank you for watching my very first quickie video. I hope you enjoyed that. And please also visit my website at cafewatercolor.com. Sign up for my newsletter and get a watercolor PDF guide and the online course update. Please also check out my online store for my painting and bookmark. I will see you next time.